Go no, join the army so that your water. wife is not raped, no, that's all. Go and rip out someone's, someone's M's apple. It's not 50 tons of iron with a flag, it's a flag that weighs 50 tons, and it has a tank underneath. Why the FK are you taking pictures of bushes? Show me the trench. You don't have to die for Ukraine, you have to kill for Ukraine. Why should I lose my people here? Nestor said, journalist, while the Ukrainian society is waiting and discussing the upcoming counter-offensive of the Ukrainian army. The Ukrainian army here in the Bakhmut district where we are now in a deaf defense, uh, Our story today Oboroi. is about the 54th Brigade, which is currently based in the city of Bakhmut. But the brigade itself performs tasks a little north of Bakhmut. And our story will be about the K2 Battalion, which recently showed its work. In particular, how their tanks squashed the Russians in a forest area. Catch it. If you don't take off, I'll send you there with a grenade effing asshole. Seriously, it was observing from here. A fucking Lotus China made a man aerial vehicle. Somewhere there's Russian a man aerial vehicle with explosives that he saw through a binocular lying on their territory. It fell down and ours saw their picture. Their kamikaze drone is white. Did he close the door, bitch? Yes. FK, that antenna is screwed then. It'll be blown off by a kilogram and a half of plastic. Do you have a drone with shrapnel? With more plastic and shrapnel? Yes, the same drone. We will try to connect to it now. Plus, in this booth, they have a communication unit. There's a communications officer and sky watcher sitting there. And we want to fly into this booth, destroy the antennas, and destroy the entire communication unit. Well, to waste shells on it is just unserious. We shot here once, destroyed an antenna there, and they put up a new one where we broke the wire. We have to directly hit the unit. Well, not at the unit, but at the service personnel. FK, where the fuck are they hitting from? Slowly, the drone. That's the kamikaze one. And those drones could not take off, so he took a new drone. It can barely make it to reach. That's it, so wait. Is the door open? Then let it crash right into the door. The door is open. That's great. Second, hit the roof. Let's see where it fell. Plus, I see it. It get here, hit here, see the mark. FK get it. So there was an explosion. It, it hit with the tablet there. It should have exploded well. Let me stop the recording and play back it. Plus, go ahead. Go ahead, find out and sugar, replace the battery. In order to so, if Kagan, you will fly the same one. We got our first trophy tank on the third or fourth day after we entered this location. Russian tanks have no analogs. They are the most problematic tanks. I just want to say to Ravagansavad, are you crazy or what? By the way, the thermal emitters are French. Yes, they really have no analogs. And since when are you in charge of this tank group? I told him, go do this, go do the armor group. So he went to work on the armored group. If it was not Kirill Kirillovic, I would not have gotten into the tank. I thought tanks were for the brave. I was very afraid. When we went to battle near Spurn village in Bakhmut area, I immediately went on a direct hit from 40 meters away, from 100 meters. For the first time in my life I rode in a tank in battle. That is the concept of closed positions. Besides, a tank is not artillery. It is very accurate, but the gun has a short life, so we ran out of high explosive shells very quickly. We compensated for the missing ones, but it is so good for direct fire. And who's the T-shaped trenches now? The T-shaped now is our deep rear. Battle for the T-shaped. We take this position during the day. In the morning, they take it away from us. In the morning, we take it back. During the day, it's ours. And at night, they take it. And that's how it passed from us to them. Three times, this position changed hands. For us, it was not a strategically important position. But for our neighbors, to the left and right, it was an important position. We had to fight for it. The enemy could have made a very good foothold for an offensive. 
and we needed to inflict so many losses on the enemy that they would simply give up the idea of continuing to attack, attack and counterattack, attack our units. And so we did this for eight days, hours, theirs, hours, theirs, and in the end we exhausted them. Yes, we also had losses. Our battalion suffered losses, and it was also very difficult for us. We had a lot of 300 military slang for wounded, like a lot, a lot, for our unit it was a lot. How many? About 13. Well, look, it's corny, simple. Enemies for the T-shape, for the Barracuda trench, for the left flank died about... How many of them died at the T-shape? 600. About 600. Many people do not understand why we are going with flak. Well, why? Well, they say literally, you are betraying the positions, you are betraying the tank's location, of course we are. Yes, we are. Well, you think we are betraying. When a 50 ton with a flag is going, believe me, that's the flag weighs 50 tons. It's not 50 tons of iron with a flag, it's a flag that weighs 50 tons, and it has a tank underneath. These are fundamentally different things, you know. T-72 Falcon. T-72 Nomad. The MPE-2C. When the battle starts, I remember they started like this. I see that there are 30 infantrymen there. They are already sitting with us on the stream, on the radio station. They see everything. They are already warming up the vehicles. I tell them to go. They go and out ten times, they just going in vain. Well, while the Russians are still coming, we kill them all and return the armored group. But there were several times, well, many times, when the Russians just reached us. And the armored groups went in and saved them. That's why there should always be an armored group deployment. Why fight with your fists when you have a tank? We used to start. We ran with him together in 2014 in all the trenches, in all positions. And when the battle started, if I heard my tank coming somewhere, I would go out and say, shoot, shoot for another 15 minutes until it gets there. Well, it's completely different. And there he's feeling abandoned, insulted. He does not know that's about him. Who knows what is going in a fighter's head at that moment? He is in a battle. Artillery is shooting at him. He sees a bunch of Russians, a bunch of enemies coming towards him. And anything can happen in his head. He may be a good Good guy, a great fighter, but at that time he has chaos and anarchy in his head. And imagine that he is sitting there thinking that his... It does not matter that there are three drones hovering over him. He does not see them. He may not hear me or the unit commander shouting to him over the radio station. He's done. He's already... He already lives in his own world. And here he sits there and hears, armored vehicle is coming and he listens to the radio station. It's our armor. And they say to him, hold on for 20 seconds, son, I'll be there in three minutes. And he says, all right. The mood of an infantry changes instantly. I saw when they were poking fix them. I was going on a tank and our guys were poking their fix to the enemy from the trenches, you know. They say, wait, now they will come to you. And everything is changing. People have to realize that they are not alone. Give me your hand. I'm scared from above. What if someone there is? I'll put you inside. Inside? We'll probably go in the armor, and you'll come in the armor. Oh, I'm ready to go inside. It's not so scary. To the right, like this? That's hard. Come on. Fuck it. Left. Oh, it's hard. It's a mechanical. You have to use both eyes. You look like this. Oh, I see it. See how good it is. All right, Rush, let's go. might get hit. Wait, if it hums, you have to immediately hide under the tank. I run to the platoon commander and say, give me a walkie-talkie to the front line, he gives it to me, I come back, and hear mortar rounds falling near the tank. I manage to climb up the turret, open the hatch, something broke there, it did not work. I see a guy sitting there, my mechanic, I say, run and get out to your room as soon as I close the hatch, a round falls, it hit the turret. It pierced everything, it boomed. If I had not closed the hatch in time, it would have torn apart. Literally 10 seconds. And who 
was there when you were squishing them, who was the driver. There was no mechanic. And Ryan was, were you the gunner? Yes. And you were shooting. Was that the last shell you fired, or were there more? Well, in fact, yes. In fact, there was only one shell left in the carousel. Plus, the gun was jammed a little bit. The tank was not actually in combat condition, so to speak. By the way, this is the most common question I read in the comments. Why the command? He has a machine gun. Why did not he get out and watch Jacob start shooting? You people are crazy. How do you imagine that there are 28 heavily armed people sitting there? And you want a man without a bulletproof vest to get out and shoot at them with a machine gun at point blank range? And they will not shoot at him. And the shrapnel? It seems like they were sitting there in a stupor. I don't know. To be honest, we saw you point a gun at them and they just sit there and do nothing. They were just in a stupor. You know how we work, me. We were near Chernihiv and people there were under a tank fire. That's ours. Are you sure that's ours? And when even a shell hit the brusque work, everyone was alive. But the Akubar injuries were such that people were simply lost, did not know what to do. But here, roughly speaking, when ten shells hit the brusque work next to each other, a meter away, they were no longer able to fight. we saw was radically different from the picture the drone saw. That is Kirillite. The battalion commander was in constant contact with me. We saw a forest area, but even from 30 meters away it's not clear to seize trenches. There are like just a piece of bag. You can see everything. We shoot in that direction. He says, okay, yeah, that's it. We continue shooting in the same place to the left. Maybe five meters to the right. We slowly approach. And when we ran out of ammunition, the three of us see the following picture a trench, and they there ducked and dived like the hamsters, ducked and dived, ducked and dived. We were sitting there, did you see that? Yes, and Vitalik hit them generously. But I had no idea there were so many of them. It was as if they were gathered there on purpose right where I had to shoot. You did not have any, I don't know, feeling that you were running over people. I don't know, or something like that, like whether it was humane or not, I don't know. There were no humans there. If there were humans there, we would not have behaved like that. Not only the enemy. You know how to explain it to you, we do the same they do to us. We are at war, we are enemies, we have to destroy each other. If I don't destroy them, they will destroy me and my comrades. So I simply have no choice. The only thing that reassures me is that not only that they are Russians, who have been so cruel this year, that the hatred for them is just incredible. They are also criminals, that is all the scum that has not found a place in the world. And why are they are lying there? They were working. So they came to us with a goal, with a desire to gain freedom, so we released them. I feel uncomfortable standing here, and I'm afraid that they will see tanks. Come on. If the enemy gun starts working, we will hear it. Of course, it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable here in general. It's like they say in Kyiv, I'm sorry, I'm not for war. I would go to war, but I'm not for the war. And it seems that Rusik's mother gave birth to him, saying, well, what a warrior I gave birth to. I gave birth to a boy for the war under 27 years old. In fact, under 26 years, I haven't seen any military people here. Were you also mobilized, or did you go on your own? I signed a contract at the age of 26, just because I wanted something interesting, I got a divorce, and I went there. And I ended up in the army, and I was shocked at how comfortable and cozy I feel here. Even with the war, it's very bad and unpleasant. But even so, we managed to somehow make a life for ourselves. He found his calling to squish people, the enemy, not people, and not to crush, but to destroy.
Yeah, they show who is. The driver is still learning. You can see it switching along. The lever is a bit jacked. It's okay, it will work. Dear Romance's YouTube channel viewers, we remind you not to forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are a little short of 1 million subscribers. Also, please ask us your questions, write comments, we are waiting for them, they make us very happy. And we are happy when you like our videos. Please also write what videos do you want, we will definitely try to make them for you. Well, okay. Well, take a picture, film it. Tell them to zoom in a little bit more. Zoom in a bit more. Why, FK, are you taking pictures of bushes? Show me the trench. Yeah, like that. Zoom in a bit more. Is that me yelling so loud? Commander, more gasoline. Bring. What's the gasoline? Bring a grenade. If you want gasoline, bring gasoline. But remember that the state does not give it much. Children, 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 my beloved children. It's just who I love that I demand twice as much from. I don't like stupidity, badly don't like. He knows what is needed for the video analysis, who ran out, what they brought, how they ran out. It's gathering information. We rather film a burning trench and when potential targets flee, why look at them? Why do I need it? What's burning there? Just bushes. I love the way it's burning, the way everyone is fussing. But they ran away right to escape, yes. We don't know how many were there. Mario, you're pointed at the explosion, right? He threw a grenade at, and only two of them ran away. A battalion is a mechanism. It's like a clock or a car, and each part has to work. One rudder or one wheel cannot work. It has to work all parts. And when everyone is working, it is much more efficient. And there is no need to tell anyone from morning to evening, Koli and patient. They should know what they need and what they want. They all want to kill Muscovite's ethnic slur for Russians from morning to evening. Especially among unmanned aerial vehicle pilots and mortar gunners who will destroy. I don't care about this. I need the evening statistics of the general staff. And there they are competing. Me had done too or not me. They seem to be offended by you. Oh, film that uniform. Will you authorize the fire? Of course, damn it, let them shoot him. Why the fuck is 60 if fucking round He was waiting for an order. What order? There is a target blasted. And you are waiting for that fucking order. He can't reach him anymore. Not anymore. Waited, damn it. Holy, get the 82 millimeter mortar. Siskin, get the 82 millimeter. I want... Two fools are running around freely, damn it. You don't pay attention to this puddle, okay? This fly and you call puddle. I told you not to pay attention to it. There are four of us here. Is the cat the fifth? I get it. One went on vacation yesterday. The dog is six. It stuck to you too. We brought her from Izium. Separatists threw her away on their positions, and we took her and brought her here. That is, she was with them before, and now with us. Works now for us. A defector made up her mind. Yes, yes, yes. Gun to battle. Shark to battle. Armor piercing projectile. Aim and report.
Are you ready? Готов. 39 Shark speaking. I'm ready. Fire. Пострел. They say that the rapier is an artillery sniper rifle. I was filmed once when I was 14 years old. What happened? I was holding beekeeper's initiation. The apiary. Yes, I used to practice it when I was a kid. <laughs> beekeepers and war. Technically, the rapier also stings. <laughs> Who came up with the idea of living here? We came up with it. We were told to prepare some kind of dugout to dig. We came, there was ice here. They offered it to the commander. He agreed. But I feel that there is a little lack of air here. It was flooded. It's wet here now. Until we air out. Is this how much water you had and it all floated? The machine gun was standing like that and there was this much water. There were three people on the beds. The beds floated up and remained dry. The entire wall had to be broken to let the water go. It became wet when there was water. Did you break the wall yourself? Yes, the oilcloth prevented the water from leaving. That's why we had to break it so that the water would go away. All our stuff went down the drain. It must be difficult to sleep right now. We are very tired after the whole day. So we fall down and sleep at once. I mean, there is not enough air, it seems, but it's safe. Yes, when there is a shooting somewhere and you don't care. So it is possible to organize life in a tube. Yes, yes, you can do it anywhere. As they say, if a person wants to live, they will find all the means. If we have to, we will dig in the ground and make the necessary conditions. Now there is an attack on our neighboring unit, our brigade, neighboring battalion. We make adjustments. We deploy our drone, they deploy theirs for more accurate artillery adjustments. Now, here is the fly-in. There is a commas, a large mass of infantry, standing here near the target. Are you trying to hit them up with Bradmoor's or We are still aiming. There are opinions that the Russians want the Bakhmut Sloviansk Highway, on which they are already standing, to turn here to Severs, and allegedly this whole group of Ukrainian troops will find themselves allegedly encircled. It will be difficult with logistics for them. They are as far to encircling as I am to vacation. Our troops may find themselves surrounded. Our troops cannot be fucking encircled. The Russians can suck my dick. What the fuck? Encirclement. It's not that I don't see the encirclement, I don't feel it, and I don't imagine it. Not even slightly possible. Here we still have 800 roads that can be driven. So what's the panic? We are just moving in, we are just settling in. I'm taking the brazier, you see. Retreating my ass. Leave the panic. We are not on the Titanic. Commander of the second unit, by your order. Copy, I heard you. I heard you already doing it. You see, 
Adjustments were made and we have a direct hit now. Is it a truck? Here is a truck. There is a bunch of infantry. This is their area of concentration. Here they come from life cycles, from the highway, and pile up here, trying to advance. Spark 60 meters further along the bushes now was perfect. Take a little higher. Understood those dense bushes. Uh, Yes, 50 meters, then another 50, and so take 200 meters above. They are gathering there, and then they start advancing towards us. Now it was great. I asked the battalion commander, Colonel, the first day of the war has begun, the second day, the third, what should we do? He says, what to do? Did you have any other order? Go to war, don't fuck with yourself, nor your people, nor your personnel. The fuck do I know? Go fight. If there are no new orders, the old order is executed. Personally, I am not very worried that the child should come to visit me. Would I take the child to stay with me for a week if I was worried that there would be an encirclement? Why would I do that? How old is your child? Adult man. He is almost nine. Is this the toilet we passed? It? Yes, these are our conditions. Excuse me. No, everything is fine. We have been here since last July. Audible explosion. That was a mortar. Don't be afraid. It passed by. How close is it to us now? It flies over us. The Russian military are firing somewhere in the direction of the village. They are searching, as we look for their artillery, so they look for our artillery. So this now is the so-called artillery duel. Yes, yes. Bolu, Bolu, do you copy? Copy. Keep watching. Come in. This is our observation post. It is called Bingo. You can then see what we observe here. Tell me who you are watching, what they are doing. We observe the FAG's Russian military. They say that we have the Akhmet Battalion here. Let's put it this way. Sometimes you can see them, sometimes not. It all depends on the activity on the front. If you see them, is it your job to report it or hit them right away? Our task first to hit them, then to report. Killed or not. If you killed, then tell where you killed. If you notice where report it, then as soon as you start shooting, the second guy reports where you saw it, so that other posts can adjust actions and inflict a new hit. But first of all, hit them. First of all, hit them. Then report. Here we have a trophy machine gun, almost brand new. We took it from the defeated Wagners. Works excellent. Observation to monocular. There is a thermal imaker. Another pair of binoculars. I personally remember from the very beginning when I got to the position. We were in a different position. There we had a machine gun. It was then that the Wagners were there. We were firing at them. They noticed a big machine gun and started shooting at me. Meanwhile, I was changing boxes. I ran for spare boxes, and my comrade worked with a pump machine gun. And the third comrade carried ammunition. The second stands up like Rambo, starts showering them with a machine gun and shouts, Where's the raccoon? Bitches. And the comrade with the call sign raccoon says, I am here, not you, the one from Kherson. This is a good story. There were several such funny situations. If someone or something is going to pass through us, they will definitely be spotted, attacked, and they will be signaled about. The second in command who is here can at least throw a grenade or something there. So there is no one from that side. Well, from that side, no. We are the last in a row. 
Is there a battle going on somewhere in the neighboring position? There is a battle in the neighboring positions, and the rear is being shelled. There is constant shelling. The day before yesterday, we were set on fire. The roof was on fire. There are losses in terms of equipment. Fortunately, there are no losses in terms of manpower. And it flies like this all the time. Grads, cassettes, tanks. They don't stop. Artillery fire began. A projectile hit our roof. A fire started. Slate began to explode. The internet is still working. I called my wife and said that we probably will not have the internet soon. She asks why. Because the slate is exploding, the roof is on fire. It's kind of funny. Today I learned the phrase funny, but not fun. <laughs> Because there are shelters, and people's reaction has developed after the first fly and everyone went silent, and when they the Russian street to hit the target, well, it's very bad. They thoughtlessly throw a bunch of shells. There were very difficult injuries. When you look at a person and understand that the chances of survival are very small. Because there were two penetrating holes in the head through the eye. Under the helmet, the arms were missing. How can you see this at 23 years old? You know I already got used to it somehow. The first or second year, when I started serving, it was difficult. I came at 18 years old, the youngest in the platoon, in the battery, you are burdened. The main thing is to remain human, always tell the truth, because in war every untruth told will result in a very unpleasant situation. If you told the truth, if you were guilty, you got some penalty. But it's better that way. So I got used to it. Then I had a vacation five days to go to my wife. And no matter how well it was on the third day, I wanted to go back to the boys. Somehow I got used to it, a bigger family appeared. We all live as a friendly team. What is it? Sounds of shells in the background. This is the gunfire. Maybe some or derogatory term for Rasanes was spotted, and it will be one less. Our guys are shooting. That is good. If it is not ours who are shooting, sometimes you can hear the whistling of a bullet overhead. This is what they call the road of life. All the way to the village is considered the road of life. On each part of the front line, there is a piece of road where you can be seen. There is no cover. It simply looks different on every other one. We are shooting with RPGs now, we have nothing else. So let's hit those bags with an RPG. Doesn't it hit the Kamez? Did you measure the distance? Did you find the place or not? Bowden, aim the 120 millimeter mortar there and hold it. I know where, but now I can't measure. He aimed. Now zoom a little. Have you passed the lakes? Of I can see everything, the first pipes. 6,870. That fucking bitch is leaving now. And the second is still standing. Russians are not weak. They are dumb, but not weak. And they learn fast, very hard, and very fast. And we ourselves teach them, who call them weak. The Second World Army cannot be weak. 
If they were so weak, we would not lose territory. Someone formulated such a thesis that they are stupid, and we are the best of the best. But this is their opinion, and then let everyone come here, and let's see how the best of the best thing is working out. Not everything is bad with us in general, not everything is bad. We are not bad, but not perfect. We need to think more, and if everything were so easy, Everything would be easy. We would not be standing here. We would be at the border. I would already be shooting at Rostov. And Belarus also. What exactly about Belarus? I don't like the fucking liars. My creed. My creed. I don't like those who fucking lie. And for the Belarusians, I will definitely be fucked. But they are fucking bastards. Not all. Lukashenko. Talking about Lukashenko and for those who get his orders, I feel more or less good about the nation itself. There are really good, decent people. And this one is pure hell. And the devil is worse than faggot. That is all. I will show you now it's every man's duty to pick up his shit and go to the front line. It's every man's duty, damn it. Did I explain correctly? Maybe women too. Well, maybe, but it is the duty of every man. Until he was seven years old, he was allowed to use the subway for free, damn it, and the trolling was too. He should go here and fucking fight. This is my opinion. Go here and fight if he can. I cannot have another point of view. If he can go and in the rear, he will be of less use than at the front, then only to the front. I see no other way out than it is some have to fuck around for 10 years while others do not. I was not taught to be a commander at the academy. I was given a battalion. The commander said, come on, Kirill, fucking do it. Everyone was thinking about the genocide in Butcher, about this, about that. Join the army so that your wife is not raped. That's all. Go rip out some Adam's apples. One who lets it is getting advantage of. I'm not saying that there should be 20 million men standing here now, no. Sign up. Why should grandfathers fight? To be honest, I don't understand why 19-year-old boys who have neither wives nor children should go. Let him learn. Let the child still learn. And 25, 35, 40 years old welcome to the armed forces of all this fucking talking will make me a fucking senior lieutenant. But that is fine.